Hello, my name is Abraham. I lived a long, long time ago. If you have a few moments to listen, I have an amazing story to tell you that involves my son Isaac. I'm sure many of you are already familiar with his story, but I want to tell you some things that may be new to you. Of course, you know that we keep written records of our genealogies and all our dealings with our God Yahweh. We do this because he promised a deliverer would come through our family that would eventually remove the curse placed on the first man and woman. As proof of his presence, messages are often hidden within the records we keep to demonstrate his supreme power and that he actually exists outside of time and space. It is one of those messages that I want to tell you about now. Knowing this about Yahweh may help you understand why I always seek to do his will, no matter how hard it may appear at the time. This story illustrates that fact in a big way. Believe me. Our wise men call the experience I'm about to relate the Akida. Literally, that means the slaughter. The event itself has been a source of criticism of our god, Yahweh. But when you discover the message behind the event, it is actually an amazing preview of our God's love and mercy. I'm sure that most of you know the story of my son Isaac. He was truly a miraculous child, and that he was born when my wife, Sarah, was 90 years old. When Isaac was weaned, Yahweh promised me that he would be my heir and have children. You can possibly imagine how upset I was when Yahweh asked me to sacrifice my son as a burnt offering. He even referred to him as my only son, whom I love. This is the first time the word love is used in our sacred text. We have a rule that the first time a word is used in our text, it is usually related to a very special event. How could he do this? He promised that Isaac would be my heir. Then it came to me. This was probably a test of my faith in his power to keep his promise. I truly believed that he would even bring Isaac back from the dead if necessary. It also occurred to me that this may be one of those messages that Yahweh intended to send to future generations. This could validate some special event planned from before the beginning of creation. To that end, I want to briefly summarize the events following. It is important to note that Isaac was about 33 years old when this happened. I recall that because it was just four years before his mother Sarah passed on. It was in the spring of the year, close to the coming of the full moon, I believe. When Yahweh made his request, I couldn't help but consider my son Isaac as being lost. Because I was determined to do all that Yahweh commanded, I thought of Isaac as no longer living, if you can believe that. Both Isaac and I left with two companions early the next morning. We traveled three days to reach the mountains of Moriah. On our way, I talked to Isaac about the promise Yahweh had made, saying that he, Isaac, was my only legitimate son who would be the one to carry on my seed. We made our way up the local valleys until we came to the region Yahweh selected. We left our companions in a valley at a water source that I understand was later called Gion Springs. We put the wood on Isaac's shoulders as we made our way up the mountain. When we reached the top of a small group of mountains, we could see a level area to the south. It was apparent that this was a threshing floor. Yahweh moved me to select a higher point to the north that overlooked the whole area to the south. I understand that later, this very spot was called Golgotha, or Calvary. Isaac and I built an altar. When I told Isaac he was to be sacrificed, at first, he resisted. After telling him why I trusted that Yahweh would resurrect him, he agreed to be bound and placed on the altar. It was important to me that he freely volunteered to be sacrificed. 
Had he resisted, I would not have proceeded. I'm sure you know how the story ends. An angel intervened and stopped me at the last moment. Our sacred text indicates that this was no normal angel. Instead, it was Yahweh himself who stopped me. A ram was caught in a thicket by its horns and was used in place of Isaac. For that reason, I call this place Yahweh will provide. You should understand that it's almost impossible for a ram to be caught in a thicket by its horns. A ram would never consciously put its head into a trap of any kind. This was a miracle. That is usually where the story ends. But now I want to tell you the rest of the story. Strangely, in our sacred text, which you call the Bible, Isaac is mostly missing from the following two chapters. Naturally, he returned with us back to Beersheba, where we were living, but nevertheless, the text never mentions any of his personal activities. It is almost as if he was someplace else during that time. About seven years pass before Isaac is again mentioned personally. He was 40 years old then. It is as if he was intentionally written out of the text for some reason. It is important for you to know what happened during those intervening years. Four years after the incident with Isaac, Sarah, my wife, dies. We entomb her in the cave of Machpelah near Mamre. After Sarah's death, I sent my chief servant, Eleazar, to find a wife for Isaac. He had to travel quite a distance to reach my family who lives in Hera. For some reason, he remains unnamed in our sacred text. Eliezer's return from Haran is very important because it reintroduces Isaac back into the text after a seven-year absence. This was when Isaac receives his new bride, Rebecca. He takes her into his mother's abode, which he has prepared for her. Notice this summary of the event, and you can tell me if you can figure out the message it was intended to convey. I received a command from God to sacrifice Isaac, my only promised son. That day, Isaac died to me. First, Isaac was lost to me for three days, and then was resurrected. Next, my unnamed servant is sent to a far country to find and deliver a bride for my only resurrected son. My son Isaac returns to the text when he received his virgin bride. Do these events that happened almost 4,000 years ago remind you of anything? Jesus was sacrificed on the very spot where Isaac was to be offered. He was dead for three days and then miraculously resurrected. Jesus leaves the earth, promising to return. In his place, an unnamed Holy Spirit is assigned to gather his church bride until he comes back to take her to his abode. We won't see Jesus again until he takes his bride, the church, to the abode in heaven prepared for her. That is the amazing message behind the story of the Akedah.